Well, hello and good evening. Welcome to Boot Camp 2020, Father's Day Boot Camp, our second night. I am Pastor Darrell Webster, the Senior Pastor of Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church, and I am delighted that you are joining us for the second night. What a fabulous time on last night. We had several thousand viewers who joined in. Yay, 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 yay. We give God a clap and a hand praise. And I want to say out of those several thousand viewers, 65% of those viewers were men and fathers and boys. We give God a hand of praise for that. I promise you tonight we're back, we're energized, and we are excited, and we're ready to get it on. We welcome you from California. We welcome you from New Mexico. We welcome you from New Jersey. We welcome you from Florida. We welcome you from Kansas City, and we welcome you who are watching us around the globe. This is a great day to be alive, and it's a great day to add value to you and your family. Hey. Why don't you call someone and let them know that boot camp will be on for the next hour. We're delighted to be partnering again with the National Baptist Convention of America, where the great esteemed president is Dr. Samuel Tober. And not only is he an esteemed president, he is a visionary and a great leader. And I want to applaud him for his efforts for saying, hey, let us partner with you to add value to boys and men and mostly families. Well, listen. We have a great night planned for you. We're also happy for Deacon Four Star Lawton, who's the president of the Brotherhood, along with my colleagues from around the country who's watching. Hey, let's listen to a welcome from Dr. Tober. Then we'll have a shout out from one of our boot camps. We have boot camps all around the country. We've been heard on 1,500 radio stations to several million people. So after Dr. Tober's uh, welcome, there'll be a shout out from one of our boot camps. And then you know what's going to happen. In the words of T.D. Jakes, get ready because uh, Cleveland Garner is going to come and work you out. Welcome tonight. I'm Pastor Sam Talbot, president of the National Baptist Convention of America International Incorporated. I wanted to take these moments to bring you some greetings tonight and to welcome you to this live broadcast of the men's boot camp. I want to thank Brother Forrestal Law, president of our brotherhood, Kansas City, Missouri, for partnering with the Reverend Darrell Webster of the Emanuel Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, and the men's boot camp so that we can have this presentation for men and boys all across the length and breadth of this nation and possibly the world because of the technology platform that we're using to send it to you this evening. I want to encourage you to know that the men's boot camp strategy is a strategy that has been developed prayerfully based in the Bible that brings value to the life of men and boys. And oh, how we need that in this day and time when we have gone through a pandemic, somewhat still in the midst of it, and we're experiencing right now protests because of the injustice to black men all over this nation. At this time, it is important for the historically African-American church to stand up and let our voices be heard, but be sure that we're grounded in the word of God, that we're peaceful in our protests. And so tonight, I again want to welcome you to this uh, broadcast and thank the Reverend Darrell Webster with the Men's Boot Camp. That is an exciting initiative that is changing the life of men all around this country. So God bless you. Please pay attention. Remove all distractions. Be prayerful and be on time so that you can hear every word that the Lord will use Pastor Darrell Webster to utter to us this week as we join together coming up on this Father's Day. And I want to say again, Happy Father's Day 
to all of the fathers, and your days can be happier as you implement the principles of the men's boot camp. God bless you. Let's get tuned in to the men's boot camp. Thank you. Good evening, fellas. My name is Keith Harvey, and I'm head of the men's ministry here at First Baptist Church of Lincoln Gardens, where the Reverend Dr. DeForest B. Story Jr. is our senior pastor. We've been a part of boot camp for seven years, and in seven years, the boot camp lifestyle has taught us to become better sons, better brothers, better husbands, better friends, better fathers, better, better men. men. Happy Father's Day, fellas. Boot camp men. Oh, oh, oh. Welcome, 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 everyone. I welcome you uh, here from Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, and for those of you who did not attend our virtual boot camp for the first time uh, yesterday, welcome today. For those of you who did, welcome back. Again, my name is Cleveland Garner, and I'm just a simple servant, and I will be leading you in exercises today. Uh, first, I would just like to give a, uh, a boot camp flashback. Uh, 15 years ago, when Pastor Webster first introduced the boot camp, I didn't know what to think, especially when you're talking about 5.45 a.m. in the morning. Anyway, uh, things just kind of just got really, really, really excited really, really quick, and it just caught us all by storm. Uh, there was testimonies. Uh, the testimonies grew stronger. They grew, uh, I mean, really intense. It actually grew so intense that we had to establish a covenant and that covenant basically said, what's that said here it stays here. Yeah. And if you do tell it, then we would consider kicking you out of the boot camp. Anyway, nevertheless, uh, one thing about uh, Pastor Webster, he has a vision for men, for growing men, for making disciples. And uh, during this boot camp time, we talked about father wounds, childhood wounds. We talked about self-inflicted wounds. And these are the things that kind of catch you off guard that you're not familiar with. And they help me as not just a father, but as a husband, as a Christian, as just a all-around man. You know what I mean? And uh, from that point, I think uh, I've, I've attended several different conferences. Now, remember, I'm a church-going guy, I'm a Christian, but I just needed something else. And boot camp just kind of transformed me. It just kind of gave me what I needed to kind of get to the next level uh, of my spiritual walk. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of add that, you know, when I have an opportunity to uh, uh, give my testimony, I want to kind of sneak it in there, especially when you're actually going through boot camp. You want to make sure that uh, you represent. So tonight, I'm gonna represent with exercise. So for those of you who are out there, last night we had a great message, we had a great exercise, and for the sake of the situation tonight, we are going to make a, uh, we're gonna take it easy. We're not gonna uh, you know, go all out with the mask on, but we're gonna take it easy. So here's how we start. Brothers, on your feet, that means you two out there, all right? All right, we're going to do what we call a lunge today. All right, we're going to stretch first. So first, hands on your hip, feet shoulder width apart, okay? Some of you guys probably need to step out a little bit, okay? For those of you at home, step, give yourself a little bit of space, okay? And so you don't tear up your furniture. All right, first, we're going to start with just bending our knees and stretching our back and stretching our thighs and calves. So it goes like such, just kind of slowly, back straight, and just start to kind of come on down, ease on down, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, back straight. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Sound like a bunch of firecrackers out there. I can hear you guys at home also. Come on. Come on down. All right, now just hold it right there. All right? Hold it right there. Now all the way up. All the way down, all the way up, all the way down. Okay, go down as far as possible this time. Okay, can y'all feel that? Yeah. Can y'all feel that? Yeah. And if you don't feel it, you ain't doing it right. All right, back up, 
Okay, all right, all right. That's just the stretching part of it. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to actually do the exercise. It's actually an eight count exercise, and it goes as such. Hands on your hip, okay? Feet shoulder width apart, and you start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty simple, right? Eight count exercise, feet out, one, two, three, back up, four, back in place, right, five, down, six, back up, seven, back, eight. Ready? All right, feet shoulder width apart. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Halt. Okay. Takes a little bit of rhythm. Takes a little bit of coordination as well, right? All right. Go ahead and shake that out. All right. Now, let's go ahead and do this last stretch, okay, like we started. Okay. This time, I want you to go all the way down like you're sitting on the floor, okay? Give yourself some balance. Ready? All the way down, as far as you can. Come on, back straight, back straight. Okay, bounce with it. Come on, guys, come on. All right, hold it, hold it. All right, y'all feel that? Y'all feel that? And if you don't feel it, all right, back up real slow. All right, on the count of three, we're going to have boot camp, and I want y'all to shake it out, all right? One, two, three. All right, thank you, brothers. Thank you. Next up, next up, we're going to have Dr. Mike Davis coming up with some health tips. Hello, brothers. How y'all today? Here again, my name is Dr. Branka A. Davis, and I'm here tonight. First of all, I just want to tell you about boot camp and what boot camp has done for me. Yes, sir. Starting off by giving you a principle. The principle is life is now in session. Are you present? Yeah. Yeah. That particular principle has meant a lot to me because it kind of keeps me motivated. And it keeps me doing the things that I need to do because, you know, life itself sometimes takes us off path of where we should be doing and where we should be going. Yes, and sometimes I had to think about that principle because it allowed me to say, okay, am I drifting? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be? Am I doing what God had called me to be? And this, this is very important to me. Boot camp has made me a much better man. Yes, sir. Boot camp has made me a much better husband and a much better dad. Yes, sir. Just when I started coming to boot camp, I said, well, I'm not going to be one to do a lot of talk. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to kind of listen and learn. Mm -hmm. But after being here a couple of years, that wasn't enough because boot camp is so powerful. Yes, sir. If you come to boot camp, it is going to change your life. Yes, sir. It is going to have some type of impact yes, on you. Yes, Whether you like it or not, you can't be here and not stay the same. Yes, You're going to change, and it's going to be a positive change, yes, positive impact on your life, which means you will go into a positive impact in the community yes, and a positive impact for society as a whole. Yes, That's what boot camp has done for me. Yes, now, let's talk about the principle today. The principle I have for you today is uh, somewhat leading from last night when I talked about 
the different numbers and the, the percentages of how this COVID virus is affecting our communities. Um, I want to talk about some things tonight that you can do to help try to protect yourself. A lot of which most of you already know, some of which you may not know. But basically what I'm talking about is things like a protocol or things that you can look for to protect yourself from the virus. Number one, if you have a, watch for the symptoms. If you see a person that cough, if you having shortness of breath, if you having uh, persistent pain or pressure in your chest, mm -hmm. if you have a loss of taste or smell, mm -hmm. they said that the loss of taste or smell is one of the leading things with this particular virus. Mm -hmm. um, and if you having a sore throat, and it can be a minor sore throat, it don't have to be anything severe. Mm -hmm. These are all the initial signs that you need to look for. And you also need to look at the fact that the incubation period is two to 14 days after the exposure, which means any time during that time, you know, you, that's why they said sometime a person is doing well and then they just go downhill. Mm -hmm. It's because you're doing this, this time phase. Mm -hmm. And these things happen. Some of the other things that you can do is wash your hands often. Yeah. And if you don't have accessibility to, um, Wash your hands with warm salt water. They said wash your hands with warm salt water for a minimum of 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that accessibility, accessibility, the next best thing is hand sanitizer. Yes, sir. That should be a part of your daily routine. Washing hands and using hand sanitizers. And when you're going out, they also recommend that you put gloves on. Now this whole thing has become diluted because the society is telling us that it's okay to go out and do whatever. But brothers, you got to look out for yourself. Yes, sir. That virus is still lurking. Yes, sir. As of today, there's 18 states that are having an increase in their cases. The death rate is increasing. That's 18 out of 50 states. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is that the virus is not going anywhere. We just got to do what we need to do to protect ourselves. The other thing you need to do is avoid close contact with other individuals. Now, they use the six feet as a guideline, but there are studies out there that say that that six feet really is not six feet because the virus, depending on the magnitude or the impact of the cough, the virus can actually tra travel up to 12 to 15 feet. So. That is a minimum, the six feet. So don't, don't not, not use the six feet, but when you're given the opportunity, I take a lot more than six feet. Um, I take as much as I can, really. Um, so d use that wisely. Try to stay away from other people. Avoid, avoid close contact. And if you cough, cover your cough and use your, your, like your, this type of deal to cover your mouth. Um, clean and disinfect door handles. Clean and disinfect, it says that, here's, here's something you may or may not know. It says the virus can be detected in the air up to three hours. That means if someone cough and inside the building, it can stay in the air up to three hours. Now on the outside, that's why they said, go to the outside as much as possible because the virus is gonna, gonna go up and, and move around with the air. That makes it a little bit more safer than being inside. Now, the next thing you want to know is that on paper and cardboard, the virus can live up to 24 hours, okay? Then on plastic and stainless steel, it, they said that it can live two to three days. That's why they talking, we're talking about disinfecting stainless steel, doorknobs, and those type deal as much as possible. Um, you should be doing it, and you also should be considering the fact that it's important that you know that when you go home, you can potentially be carrying it from the outside to the inside. 
So what should you do is, number one, initially upon re-entering your home, uh, if you can take your clothes off before you sit on anything in the house, do that. Take your shoes off at the door. Uh, take a bath as quick as you can. Do those type things. Number, the other thing that they recommend you doing, even when you go to the grocery store, I know we're doing it in my home, is we're wiping everything down. Before we take it to a designated place, we got another place where we decontaminate. So you have to decontaminate and do these things that are important to prevent and to keep yourself as safe as possible. Now, with that being said, brothers, come tomorrow, we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna go in a different direction. We're not gonna talk about the virus as much, but we're gonna talk about some things that we as black men need to be doing to protect our longevity and to try to stay healthy as much as we can. Thank you, Dr. Davis, for that health tip. Let's get ready to go into worship. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a simple song that we always sing at boot camp. It just talks about how we're going to give all of ourselves to God. Not just a piece of it, but every part of us, we want to give it to God.
wish slipping away and you asking God to do something to your mind. Come on, put your hands over your heart. You say, here's my heart, here's my heart. Here's my heart. And even though you may be dealing with a heart of unforgiveness, why don't you give God your heart? Here's my heart, oh Lord. You may be dealing with pain, but why don't you give him your heart? I offer it to you. Offer it to him. Tell him, make it more like you. Make it more I know you've been hurting for a long time. You're dealing with grief. Come on, here's my heart. Here's my heart. You're dealing with grief. You're dealing with letdown. You're dealing with disconnection. And yet God is saying, here, I want your heart. I promise if you let him in, he'll do a work in your heart. Tell him, tell him, make it more like you. Make it more like you. Make it more Now with hands lifted, tell him, here's my life, oh Lord. Here's my life. Here's my life, oh Lord. Here's my life. I want you to do something with my life. Here's my life, oh Lord. I want you to mold it and make it. like you make it more as a father like you. you've been struggling and fighting for a long time tell him here's, here's my life, my life. Oh, Lord. here's my life I can't handle it on my own here's my life here's my life here's my life I'm offering it to you for the last few months it's been crazy but here's my life like you and father now we thank you for the privilege of giving you our hands the privilege of giving you our heart and the privilege of being able to give you our mind and the privilege of giving you our life we thank you oh dear God that you're able to make it more like you and on this second night of boot camp we thank you for reminding us that you are with us in the person of Emmanuel bless every child bless every mother bless every family those who are struggling, would you help them and give them what they need? And God, we'll give you thanks, we'll give you praise, we'll give you honor, and we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for watching, fellas. Boot camp is not an event, but a what? Boot camp is not an event, but a what? Boot camp is not an event. I know you got the mask on and you social distance. Can they, they let them hear you? Boot camp is not an event, but a what? You can't give what you do not. You can't give what you do not. You got to know yourself. You got to know yourself. Growth doesn't just happen to a man. He must be. Growth doesn't just happen to a man. He must be. Listen, look at somebody at home and say, hey. Say, growth doesn't just happen to a person. They must be intentional. And then look back at the other person and shout it and say, hey. I can't give what I do not have. I got some men with me tonight. And so, ladies that are watching tonight, last night, I tried to change this thing because I know y'all were watching. And sometimes we men just cut up. And I, so I, I, uh, I was trying to be good last night. But tonight, we just going to do what we do with social distancing. We have a boot camp tip coming from Brother Tracy. Brother Tracy, what is your boot camp tip? Say it loud enough so they can hear you at home. Can, Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Everybody say it with me. Life begins, Life begins at, the at the end of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone. Say it again with me. Say it. Tracy said. Tracy said. Say it. Tracy said. Tracy said. Life begins, Life begins at, the at the end of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone. Now, if you're talking to your husband, don't get mad. Tracy's just the brother at church. We don't mean no harm, all right? Uh, uh, Terry Moncrief. Boot camp principal, Terry Moncrief, boot camp principal. The law of contribution. The law of contribution says you have to develop yourself to be able to develop others. I like it, I like it. Everyone say the law, the law a contribution. of contribution. And that's why we're partnering with the National Baptist Convention and other uh, communities to help you to grow. The law of contribution says what, Brother Terry? You have to develop yourself to be able to develop others. The law of contribution says I have to develop myself before I can develop others. Can you repeat that one more time? I must develop, develop myself, myself 
before I can develop others. Thank you so much. Brother Tracy is wiping that mic off real quick. Brother Tracy, give that um, mic real quickly to Rodney Johnson. He has a boot camp principal. Rodney Johnson has a boot camp principal. And one of the things, those of you who are watching us, I want you to really get the feel of what we do. We don't just come here and talk. These are principles that we live by. We live by these principles when we exit this building. And these men have memorized these principles for the last 15 years. Rodney Johnson. Stop being the man you want to be and be the man that God wants you to be. One more time, would you say that again? Stop being the man that you want to be and be the man that God wants you to be. Can you repeat that with me? Stop being the man you want to be and become the man or the person or the lady or the child that God would have you to be. All right, boot camp principal, uh, fellas, what is that boot camp holler? Let me hear you. One more time. Let me hear you in New Jersey. Do it with them. Let me hear you in Florida. All right, you may be seated. Let's get rolling for the night. Well, again, welcome to boot camp the second night. The metaphor of boot camp actually means, if you think about, well, what is boot camp? The acronym is because of others' testimony, God answered my prayer. Because of others' story, God answered my prayer. And each and every one of us have a story or a testimony that we need to share. Uh, when you look at boot camp, the metaphor is described as soldiers need specialized training to be able to serve in the army and to be able to work through the complex, issue, complex issues of life. So fathers and men and boys need specialized training. And let me say this to you. You never get too old to learn. And you never get too old to grow. You never get too old to learn, and you never get too old to grow. And I just want to say this because, you know, doctors have to have uh, added training and specialized training. Uh, Dr. Davis has to continue to go to end services to sharpen himself, to keep his license in his practice. Uh, uh, attorneys have to have specialized training and certification to keep their license. I was a certified instrument technician. I worked in surgery before I became the pastor. I had to go to classes so that I could stay up on my skills. Why is it if doctors have to have a special training and attorneys have to have special training and morticians have to have special training, why do we think as men we avoid of having special training to become the best man that God would have us to be? Let's think about this, y'all. Listen, life is about becoming the best person that God would have you to be. And the only way you could become that person is to, listen, be intentional about disciplining yourself to learn. Let me put it this way. We don't have a whole lot of places that we can go and learn about manhood or fatherhood. We can go to the barbershop. We can go to the bar. We can go to a business meeting. And sometimes we, or the basketball court, we may get it right. But guess what? If you really want to know what a man ought to be, his responsibilities, and what he's doing, you ought to go to the Bible. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? Because God is the originator of man. He said, let us make man in our own image. I said, you ought to go to the Bible. Not only is God the originator of man, he is the owner of man. He scooped man from the dust, blew into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. So I contend the best place to learn about authentic manhood is to be able to come to a church or a small group or a discipleship group where brothers are willing to be open. Now, I want to say this just in the introduction. I'm going to teach in a minute. Listen, we don't just come and, and I don't just teach these guys. We talk. What is missing from men is real, uh, from a lot of men is real community. A real community where we can grow. A real community whereby we can share and talk about our flaws and failures. And we don't have to worry about nobody going back out criticizing us and telling what we said. Men are looking for authentic communities in order to develop their manhood.
can I say this to you? The reason why boys are struggling to become men, because we got a whole lot of men who have not developed authentic manhood, and they're still struggling with their wounds from the past. I know that's right because I was reading a statistic um, earlier today about uh, fathers, and I'm just going to give you this. I'm not going to bore you with statistics tonight, but you could put this up. Here's a statistic from the U.S. Department of Justice to uh, kind of affirm what I said. It says, listen, children from fatherless homes account for, and then it gives these statistics, 63% of youth suicide. That's why we have to develop man. Then it says... Runaways, 90% of all homeless and runaway youth. There it is. Uh, these are children from fatherless homes. Behavior disorders, 85% of all children that exhibit behavior disorders, they come from fatherless homes. High school dropouts, 71% of children from high schools who drop out of high schools come from fatherless homes. Juvenile detention rate, 70% of juveniles in uh, state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes. Listen, substance abuse, 75% uh, of adolescents and patients of substance abuse come from fatherless homes. And then aggression, 75% of rapists is, motiv is motivated by displaced anger because the father is not in the home. Now, I brought that up tonight because you probably are wondering, and somebody's probably online now making a cute comment, why is he doing this? America is struggling. You're talking about an a, a, a epidemic. We have an epidemic of dealing with children from fatherless homes, so we are intentional about making impact. Well, last night, I gave you uh, two things that fathers can do to help their children, and I gave two instructions of what children can do to help their fathers. That was on last night. I want to just uh, kind of give you a quick recap for those of you who are watching us for the first time. The first thing I said, if you're going to help your children, you have to become a father who exemplifies faith who demonstrate faith. And because I'm a Christian, I won't shy away from this, and I don't back up from this. Listen, the turning point in my life is when I came to faith and accepted Christ as my personal Savior, and that changed me from the inside out. And since, and since boot camp is not just a, um, uh, it, it's not just for those who are in prison, and, and it's not just an intellectual and academic uh, movement, it's a spiritual movement with emphasis on education, all right? But it starts with your faith in Jesus Christ. And I talked about Noah last night, and I've got to move quickly. And I talked about Noah saved his family because of his faith. It said, by faith, Noah, when he was warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. Noah saved his family because of his faith. And I said, the way that you... Turn things around in your household is to place your faith in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is able to help you. If I don't say anything else tonight that you remember, remember, listen, listen, listen. A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. And listen, you may be at the end of your road, but if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that bend in the road as a father is not the end of the road if you turn your life over to Jesus Christ. And all I'm saying to you is that if you don't remember nothing else I said, you got to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Would you put that up one more time? And then I gave you a quote. I said, by being faithful, it shows that that we value our relationships and that we want them to last for a long time. And I encourage you fathers, the only way you can become faithful is that you got to hear God. Noah was warned by God. And then you got to heed God's word. You don't just hear it, but then you got to heed it. And how you heed it is that you do something about it. And Noah was able to save his family because he built an ark. And you want to save your family? Listen, you save your family by doing whatever you hear God tell you to do based on his word. I said, so fathers, if you're going to help your children, don't go by your feelings. 
Go by your faith. And when you look at this piece in um, Hebrews 11, it talks about faith being the substance of things hoped for, the, the evidence of things not seen. It, it really talks about faith being the assurance of things hoped for. That's the substance. And the conviction of things hoped for. And he says the reason how faith shows up, how it shows up, it shows up in the life of these men and women in Hebrews chapter 11 by them putting their faith in the object of Jesus Christ. That was last night. Then I said the second thing fathers can do real quickly is show affection toward their children. And this was a biggie on last night, and I'm going to jump right into this one. Um, I talked about how the prodigal son, um, um, dad, listen, showed affection toward him when he was on his way home. And last night, after I finished, I, have, I had so many comments from men about this whole piece on affection. So I just put together uh, just five things from a book that I was reading to show you how to show affection because most men are not affectionate. And one of the men said, I remember the illustration that you gave. I hug my children when they're young, but now that my children are older, I've stopped hugging them and kissing them. They said, I'm going to go back and embrace them. Believe me, your grown children need you to show them affection. Never make the statement, I raised them. Listen, when they are young, they are on your knees. When they are older, they are on your heart. And I think what's happening in our society right now, our children are starving from a lack of affection. Let me give you this real quickly. Put this up. Here's four, five ways you can affirm them, and I'm out your way on this one. Meaningful touch. They need to be hugged consistently and often. Number two, a spoken message. This is showing, on showing affection. They need to hear the word, I love you, consistently and often. Number three, uh, attaching high values to them. They need to know they matter and are worth being loved. Number four, picture, a, picturing a special future for them. They need to know they have potential and unique gifts and capabilities. God can use to bless others with later in life. And number five, an active commitment. They need the first four blessings repeated throughout, underline that, throughout their childhood in life to avoid the sense of rejection that sets in. Let me say this. Remember these four, and we'll make this outline available to you. If you're struggling with a relationship with your children, you have to ask yourself a question. Am I giving them a meaningful touch? Am I speaking to them in a positive way? Am I adding value to them? Am I picturing um, a, a special future for them? Am I active in my commitment in rehearsing these things over and over? Now, I want to say this to you as men. You know, and women, I want y'all to understand this also because some of you may struggle with it. If you struggle with showing these, uh, uh, these signs of affection and affirmation to your children as a father and as a man, don't feel bad because if you grew up in a family that was not highly affectionate, Sometimes, you know, you struggle with it because you've learned that behavior from another family member or from your mother and father. If your father didn't show you that type of affection, then, you know, it's hard for you to show your children that affection. That's why we're having boot camp. As we focus on the family and save our sons and save our daughters, the goal of boot camp is to give you tactical strategies on how to save your family. Nor save his family by heeding God's word and going to work. But you can save Save your family and help your family if you would practice these tactical principles. All right. Number three, how can you help your family? Here's a new one for the night. Fathers must show tenacity, tenacity, tenacity. And I'm using this acronym of a father to give you uh, tactical points on how to help your children. Um, this is the presentation, the acronym father I went through and I wrote down six words that you ought to remember. The first one was fathers need to demonstrate faith the second one is that fathers need to be affectionate but the third one is that a father needs to show tenacity and when you think about that whole word tenacity that word means to persevere it means determination it actually means persistence that's what tenacity means it means perseverance determination and persistence now let me say this to you I applaud Fathers and men 
who persevere regardless of what's happening in their life. They, they persevere. They, 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 they are determined to hold their families together regardless of what's happening. Can I give you the person tonight? It says, by faith. We're still in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, this is the Hall of Fame of Old Testament uh, people who made an impact. And even though they were not perfect, they had flaws and faults and failures. It says that by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on the top of his staff. Now, let me say this to you. Tenacity. Jacob is a man. Who, who, who demonstrates perseverance and tenacity. Now, I, I, I want you, and I don't have time to go here and read it, but you write these uh, verses down and you go back and read it. Um, Jacob in Genesis 27 and 19 was a liar. And, and let me say this, all fathers are not perfect. All of us done lied before. I know some of y'all ain't never told a story. And some of y'all never told a story. I know some men, the only thing they want to make me think they've been able to, able to do is, is, is play checkers. They never told a story. But I want to say this, fathers. You got to show tenacity and persevere even when you, you say stuff that you should not say. You go to God and everybody say real talk. Real talk. Everybody say straight talk. Okay, if you're watching me at home, look at that person that's next to you and say, okay, look, this is straight talk, so let's take the mask off as fathers. Let me say that again, and I should be able to get an amen through the TV. All of us at some point done told a lie. Jacob is not the only one that done told a lie. Jacob told a lie. But guess what, y'all? Not only did he tell a lie, he told a lie to his father. And I know I, man, one thing, let me say this to those of you who are watching me. Nobody has to ever teach you how to lie. Lie comes so quick before truth get his shoes on, lie and came out of your mouth. That's what an old preacher used to say. But fathers, you got to still demonstrate tenacity even when you don't say the right thing. You got to work on doing the right thing. All right? It, and, and so tonight, fathers, in, uh, when you read, uh, Genesis 27 and 19, you, you fast forward that to Genesis uh, 33 and 24, Jacob was running from God. He was a man on the run, running from his uh, brother Esau. And because he was running from his brother Esau, at this time in his life, in Genesis 33, and I'm moving swiftly for the sake of time, he was on his way back home. And he was on his way back to meet Esau. Watch this. When you read Genesis 33, 24 through number 30, listen, he had married two wives, Leah and Rachel. I want to show you something. I'm going to make this story live in your, in, your, uh, in your context today. The reason why fathers need to demonstrate tenacity and perseverance is because there's going to be some things that happen in your life and it'll make you feel like quitting. But you got to continue to persevere. Uh, listen, use prestuteros and stay persistent because if you do, you'll get the blessing. And in Genesis chapter number 33, verses number 24 through 27, listen, Jacob fell asleep. Jacob fell asleep. And when he fell asleep, that night he had a dream and he wrestled with an angel. He wrestled with an angel. Jacob wrestled with an angel. Now, now, here's what I want to say to you about fathers showing perseverance or mothers showing perseverance or children showing perseverance. Listen, all of us done blown it. All of us done messed up. I know, I know, again, some of y'all ain't, y'all ain't blown it. Some of y'all ain't messed up. But, but all of us done blown it. All of us done messed up. And, and, and when you look at this whole uh, Hebrews chapter 11, I don't, have to I don't have time to talk about it. And those, I know some of y'all women is looking at the man saying, yeah, he did it. He did it. Well, you were included in there too because Rahab was a hoochie. And I ain't calling nobody no hoochies. But when you read Genesis chapter number, I mean, uh, Hebrews chapter number 11, women, you done messed 
messed up too. The men ain't the only one that done messed up. And since y'all are watching me tonight and this is boot camp, I figured I'll yank on your chain a little bit too. But here's the goal. Listen, in Genesis, and, and when you read this whole piece of Jacob in the, uh, Hebrews chapter number 11, you got to understand, Jacob wasn't the only one that messed up. You had Moses who messed up, and he was a father. Listen to me closely. He had killed a man, but God still blessed him, and he demonstrated tenacity. You had Gideon who was fearful and frightened, but yet God blessed him, and he began to lead people during the darkest times of the history of Israel. And I know, okay, some of y'all ain't got it yet. How about Samson? Because you say, well, I ain't got no kids. You may be a boy. Samson was a young man who was born with a purpose, but yet he defiled himself over and over and over again, messing around with women. But here's what I like about Samson. He showed tenacity and he didn't mess. Listen, he did not quit. He kept persevering. What am I saying? Tenacity means as a father, regardless of your blended and extended family, you got to keep moving. And I believe I'm talking to some fathers tonight. I believe I'm talking to some fathers tonight. I believe I'm talking to some fathers tonight that just need to know that they just need to keep moving. I got to keep moving, but there's some fathers tonight just need to keep moving. Look at somebody at your house sitting at your table and tell them no matter how you messed up, guess what? You can keep moving. Listen, 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 listen. Tell them, I know that you got a blended family and maybe some extended families, but guess what? You can keep moving. And even though Jacob had Leah, which was his first wife, and Rachel, which was his second wife, he had this many children by Leah and that many children by Rachel. He did not allow his hangups and mess ups to hold him up. And some of us allowed our hangups and our mess ups to hold us up. You know what Jacob allowed? I mean, I'm sorry. You know what Jacob allowed? I shouldn't be preaching to y'all, but you know what Jacob allowed? Jacob allowed his hangups and his mess ups to set him up, not to hold him up. And fathers, I want you to demonstrate tenacity because if you keep persevering, God will be. Listen, Jacob, go back to that scripture in Hebrews. Jacob was at the end of his life. Uh, one more time when you look at the scripture, here's the context. Uh, he was at the end of his life. He was dying and he blessed Joseph's sons and he worshiped as he leaned on top of his staff. Can I say this? The reason why you need to persevere, I'm trying to watch time, but the reason why you need to persevere because, listen to me, listen, listen, the third and fourth generation is suffering because you did not, listen, 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 if you don't persevere and show tenacity, you will fail to pass on the blessing to the third and fourth generation. And what our children are dealing with right now is, listen, fathers are fumbling and they are failing to pass on the blessing. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck, um, which was the quarterback of um, the Indianapolis Colts. He was throwing a pass and he called the play. And Reggie, ran, Reggie Wayne was uh, one of the receivers at that time. And he ran, he ran the, the, the route that Andrew Luck, listen, told him to run. But then Reggie, Reggie, Reggie Wayne got there too soon and he ended up tripping and hurting himself. And when he tripped and hurt himself, Andrew Luck said, it's my fault. Hello, that that Reggie hurt himself. And the commentators asked him why. He said, because I called the play, but I came up short on throwing the pass. He said, I called the play, but but I but and I had the ball in my hand, but I came up short on throwing the pass. I want to say this to you fathers. The reason why you got to uh, show prestuterus, you got to use perseverance because God has called the plays and he expect you to pass it to your children. But if you stop, you will not be at the end of your life like Jacob. Listen, sharing and being able to bless somebody. Someone else. All right, I wish I could spend time on that, but I got to keep on going. The next thing fathers need to do, not only show tenacity, I want to say this on this tenacity, you got to be willing to wrestle with God long enough to get your act together. I wish I had time, but the next one is H. Fathers, you got to be hopeful. Put that one up. Um, um, you got to be hopeful also about your family. I don't want to turn this into sound like you got to be hopeful about your family. And it says, against all hope, here it is, Abraham. In hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Uh, you got to understand that 
even though things are not happening for you right away, you have to be optimistic to believe that what God said, even though it don't happen right away, you believe it's going to happen. Hear, hear me, fathers. God expects you to, to, to demonstrate faith, but he also expects you to demonstrate optimism. If you don't believe that that, that son can do better, ain't nobody else going to believe it for him. If your child right now or your son or your daughter is not doing very well and they're struggling right now, if you start being negative, if you start uh, criticizing them, if you become this pessimistic person, listen, guess what? If you don't believe for them and if you don't believe God can do it in them, who's going to believe it for them? I tell people all the time, deliver me from negative people. And whenever God makes a promise to you, God had made a promise to Abraham. But it took God some years to perform it. But yet Abraham kept believing. Hey, fathers, can I ask you a question? Do you believe that you can do better? Do you believe that God has the power to turn things around in your life? Or are you hopeful about the future of your sons and your daughters? Some of them may have blown it and they may not be in, they may not even be in church. Do you believe enough to keep talking to God about that situation because you are hopeful for them? Watch this. He says against hope, even though that means even though, even though he didn't see it, he didn't know how it was going to happen. He couldn't make it happen because he was old and so was his wife. He kept believing. And fathers... You need to keep believing. Could you read this quote with me? Put that quote back up real quickly on hope. There's a great quote on hope. Would you read it with me? It says what? No, no, the quote, the quote. Where there is in the future, there is. Can you read it again? Where there is no. There is no what? Where there is no hope in the future. You can't gain power in the present. And you know right now we're dealing with some difficult times. But you got to keep pushing. And guess what else you got to do? You got to keep pressing. Because the, the, when, at the end of the day, that, that power comes from you believing for your children even when your children cannot believe for themselves. Let me give you this one more and then I'll get out your way um, 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 for children. Now, I gave you two for fathers, tenacity and hope. Let me give you two things that children can do. Now, last night I said the first thing you need to do as a child is to respect your father. Then I said the second thing you need to do is what? support your father you need to support your dad you need to support your dad and I came back to this verse uh in 15 and 29 because we're about out of time but I came back to this verse listen children what dad needs is support from you he needs real support from you because guess what it's tough out here for a dad can, can I say it again it's hard out here not for a pimp <laughs> not for a player. Listen, it's hard out here for a man. And I, I, I guess, and I'm not trying to use racism, but it's certainly hard out here right now for black men. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't waltz around it. Uh, it's hard out here. One of the reasons it's hard because we're killing one another. I know that y'all don't like saying that, but, but somebody needs to say it. It's hard out here right now for us. And we got to face that. And that's why we have boot camp. It's not just preaching and teaching. It's small groups. It's addictions counseling. It's transitional housing. It's coaching and it's mentoring. It's going into some of the rough places and saying to fathers and sons and families, you can make it. It's therapy and mental health. But here's the third thing you can give your father. You can give your father affection. It says here, be devoted to one another in love, in honor, one another, above yourselves. Listen, fathers need affection. Listen, the quote says, there is no power greater than true love. Now watch this, children. I want to say this to you. It is the father's responsibility as the father to show affection. 
And I said this yesterday, and I said a little, talked a little bit about it tonight. Fathers, the reason why you need to show your children affection, because if you don't, they're going to look for it from somebody else. And, and I was reading in the study, it says that, that three things daughters need from their fathers, but I think boys need it too. It says daughters need affection, daughters need attention, and daughters need affirmation. But, but you know what? Sons also need affection. Sons also need attention. And sons also need affirmation. And, and so, listen, fathers, you have to be the one who initiate this. Um, and mothers are, are nurturers by, by design. But let me say this to women. It's hard for us because we are logical and y'all are intuitive. God made us, listen, logical. And there's a reason why God made us logical. I'm just getting warmed up, but I got to stop. There's a reason why God made us logical because he made us the man. He made us the man and he expected us to be the breadwinner. He expected us to go out into the world and take things on. But guess what? I need to tell you, you we still need affection from our children and from our spouses. Let me put it another way. Affection ought to be reciprocal. Just like children need attention. Wives need attention. Wives need affirmation. Hello. Wives need affection. Please, for God's sake, don't leave out the boy in the man. Can I tell you why? Social workers are saying right now, here's a social worker term, that we have unresolved issues and we have trauma-informed things that has happened in the lives of children and men because they didn't, some, some things happened through whether it was abuse or divorce. And you certainly need to show your children affection and attention. But then there are children right now who are traumatized because they didn't get any attention, any affirmation, any affection from their father. I talk, to him, I talk to him all the time. One young man, uh, uh, he had this father wound, and this father wound he had, uh, and I tried my best to help him. And, and, and because he had a father wound, he ended up, listen, his father didn't teach him that behavior. See, father wounds are not taught, they're caught. See, sometimes children uh, watch you. You don't necessarily have to tell them what to do, but they watch you because, listen, it is, it is in an innate, listen, um, listen to me closely. Children will imitate their fathers whether you like it or not. And I'm saying to you that, listen, you want to make your boy a good boy, your daughter a good daughter, start showing them some affection. Now, this young man, he had so much, he had so much of unresolved issues and trauma in his life. He had a son. And I watched him pass down to his son the hurt that his father had passed down to him. Listen, children, learn how to show your dad affection just like your dad show you affection. I guess I can wrap it up from, from this point. You know, oh God, I do work in the prisons. And one of the saddest things for me is to deal with grown men who are still dealing with childhood wounds. Nobody's, listen, no one has ever affirmed it. I know my time is up. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to just steal a little bit. Can, let me, can I steal four more minutes? They told me last night y'all was watching. Last night y'all was watching. And y'all told me don't quit at 8 o'clock. But I'm going to quit in just a minute. Let me just steal a few more minutes. But I have to say this. But, 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 but you saw when we were coming on um, the prisons and the prisoners. And, and um, we go there on a regular basis. And I'm, and I'm dealing with grown men who nobody's ever affirmed them. Never told them that they would be someone. Ladies, can I tell you this? Never tell a boy that he's going to be no good just like he's no good daddy. Listen, listen, listen. Ladies, 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 don't talk about that kid's daddy to him. I know, I know. Look at somebody and say, hey, he got out. But look at somebody and say, real talk, straight talk, straight talk, straight talk. Can we, can we keep it real? Can we keep it real? Can we keep it real? Listen, even though his daddy may not be all that you want him to be, listen, don't hurt his son because you're hurt. See, hurt people normally hurt people. 
And, and you're looking at really what we're dealing with right now, the hurt that we see in our society, the, the black on black killing of young men. Listen, some of these young kids are dealing with father's wound and they don't know what real love is. We go into the school to mentor, and I'm, out, I'm about out your way. But some of these young kids, at listen, at six and seven and eight and nine years old, we send the boot camp men into, into the schools to mentor some of these kids. So, so y'all won't think that for some of y'all who just talk about, oh, that's just the church, and, and the church ain't doing anything. What is the church doing? Let me tell you something. The church is doing a whole lot that we don't even talk about. But we're in these schools, and, the, and one of the ways that I've learned to, to break down uh, the barriers of these children it's just to affirm them and let them know that they matter and that they count. Listen, listen, most children won't show affection because they never had any affection. And, and, and I'm saying to you as I end for tonight, fathers, you got to show tenacity and you have to have hope. But children, if your dad, wise, if that man, if that man is doing what he's supposed to do, you show him some love. And you show him some affection. Can I tell you why? This is for children and fathers. If they don't get it from the family, they're going to get it from somebody else. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. But if they don't get it from the family, they're going to get it from somebody else. You wonder why kids gravitate toward gangs. You wonder why your young daughter gravitate and want to talk to a boy real fast. You know why? Because there's something missing in her heart that she didn't get from you. So the first person who show her some attention or him some attention, whether it's a gang banger or whether it's another male authority, they gravitate toward them because they're not getting affirmed at home well I'm out of time but I'm not out of word so as we recap for tonight fathers the, uh, the four things you can do number one show faith number two after you show faith show affection number three and I praise God for men who's sticking with it and sticking to it demonstrate some tenacity in that fourth helpful principle is to be hopeful then children you first show your daddy some respect and ladies it, it won't help it will help if you show some too make up your mind tonight you're going to stop disrespecting him in front of his kids and you're not going to talk about him yeah he may not be doing all that he need to do but don't spit that venom into that daughter or that son. And then, hey, be hopeful. Because the end of the road, a bend in the road, it's not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. Would you look at somebody and say, make the turn, brother. Make the turn, sister. Because a bend in the road is not the end of the road unless we fail to make the turn. Can I tell you why you need to make the turn? Can I tell you why you need to make the turn? We're out tonight, but can I tell you why you need to work the turn? Because life is not a dress rehearsal. It's the real thing. I said life is not a dress rehearsal. It's the real thing. And you know what? You don't get time to play around down here. So you got to make the turn tonight. Maybe you're watching me and you want to make that turn as a boy. You say, well, my dad is not in the home and I don't got caught up into some things. Guess what, young man? You can still make the turn. I made the turn at 16 years old after getting high all day and my friend got killed that night. And when we buried him, we buried another one of my little buddies I was running around with. And I made up my mind after getting shot at that I needed to make the turn. And I made the turn as a teenager. You can make the turn as a teenager. We got some other men tonight. They made the turn as a grown man. As a grown man. After going through trials and tragedy. They made the turn as a grown man. And I'm saying to you tonight. If you're watching me around this country. You can make the turn. Because God is waiting on you to make the turn. And when you, when you make the turn. Guess what? God will come rushing to you. Just like that prodigal son father ran to his boy. God is waiting to run to you and say to you. Hey. I got a plan for your life 
And I contend tonight, if you don't make the turn, because life is not a dress rehearsal, it's the real thing, you need to realize planning your life is more important than planning your career. But heads bow right where you are. I'd like to pray for you. If you'd like to make that turn, would you say to God, God, help me to make the turn. Help me, Heavenly Father, to, to, to turn toward you. Help me to get a fresh start in a new beginning. I, I want to start by placing my faith in you. And secondly, I want to fall back in love with my family. I want to love my mom. I want to love my children. And even though I'm like Jacob, I got a blended family and an extended family. I want to show tenacity. I want to hang in there. I want to wrestle with you. Father, I pray tonight right now with heads bowed all over this country that you will touch the hearts of those who may be hurting and those who may be struggling and help them to know that they can make the turn because a bend in the road is not the end of the road. Would you give them strength to call on you? Right where you are, would you say this? Father, give me strength to make the turn. Give me strength. Give me strength. Give me strength to seek to please you. And Father, tonight we give you glory for the second night. Thank you for those who are watching. Would you call 546-8131 if you need to talk to someone? We have somebody here to talk to you. 546-317-8131. That's if you're in the Indianapolis area. If you're in California. If you're in uh, other areas. We can connect you if you call us with those churches or those families that are watching from the East Coast and the West Coast. We praise God for you tonight. We'll see you one more night. Hey, call somebody and tell them we'll be on tomorrow night. Watch our introduction as we end tonight. It'll have some information on how you can reach us. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.